Hey everybody, it's your old noise pal Grant Hires, and welcome back to Hard Tech Studios. Now as you can see, we have an unboxing to do. It is going to be the Akai Timbre Wolf Analog Synth Groove Box, and we're just going to go ahead and get into it. This box is so huge, I can't even properly get the whole thing in frame. So excuse me while I just kind of cut to the sides, even though you can't really see. But, well, if you don't believe me, here we go. Let's show you some sealedness there. See that sealedness? About to break that sealedness. Look at that. So yeah, y'all get the point. It was sealed from good old Sweetwater. It got here in like two days. Like I ordered it, today's Friday, and I ordered it, yeah, ordered it Thursday morning. So two days. There we go. All right. So lots of box right here. Uh -oh. Fully cut. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to have to do some adjusting here. So please be patient with me. Okay, let's see. What do we got here? Some really off angles. All right? And good old sweet water. Keeping my uh, receipt covered. And of course, free candy. Got some bit of honeys in there. Ew, a peppermint. Yuck. Oh, and I also got some cables. I mean, it's really hard to get too many cables. And we're starting to see it now. Ah, the Akai Tambor Wolf. Oh, very heavy. Very heavy box. Let me uh, put this to the side real quick and uh, get this box out of the way. So we'll just toss it over here. There we go. Now we just have blank desk, which we will soon fill up with some synth box. Oh, that's a nice looking box. On the front, we got a picture of the synth. There's a small little poke there, but I don't think it gets into the actual product. On the side, we got a big timbre wolf symbol. Same thing on the top. And the other side. And the back, of course, like all the other Akai analog pieces. Picture of the synth. Lots of details, all kinds of fun stuff, and all kinds of fun languages. All right. So, let's go ahead and get this thing open. Let me find my knife. Yeah, I'm really excited. I've been holding off on this guy, waiting for it to go on sale. That was a little rough. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Just happened to notice it at Sweetwater and listen to those people at a closeout price, meaning they're going to stop carrying it. $300. That's a lot of synth power for $300. So when I saw that price, I picked up the phone and gave my sales rep a call. Oh, still very heavy. Got a good grip on this. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. What else we got in there? Manual. Bleh. And of course, I think I'm going to have to take this out. Okay, let me put this down for a second. All right. So now we'll take this out so we can get to the power supply. There we go. So with the uh, table, woof. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. 
Give you a little sock there. So yeah, with the Tabor Wolf, you get the power supply right in here and some very vibrant red bubble wrap. I'm going to pull this out anyway, so go and show it off. Well, the, uh, the adapter actually feels kind of heavy. Oh, sorry, I'm out of frame. Yeah, feels kind of heavy. For those nerdy enough to want to know, here. There you go. Go ahead and pause here. All right. So let's see what else. And we got the manual with all the things of uh, how to work it and all the things on what not to do and don't put this in your mouth and such. Let's see. And now we can finally get this out of the way. Even without all the box and stuffing, still got a lot of weight to it. Alright, so now we're at like a unwrapping. And I do apologize for the constant camera adjustment, but things are just shrinking as we go. Ooh. It's been a while since I got in a synth with full size keys. I mean, that's another good thing. Full size keys. Oh, and look at that. That is beautiful. Can y'all see that? Can y'all see that? That's just pretty. Okay, before I start getting too excited, start feeling this thing up, go ahead and move this out of the way. Go ahead and sit this down nice and gently. All right. And uh, let me see if I can clear my seat up here. That was a lot going on there. Oh, and right here, let's see if I can show you this. They were nice enough to put foam between the keyboard and most people do that most whoop, companies do that <laughs> guess I don't have to take it out now let's see how things look okay there we go all right so let's give this thing a nice feel like I said it is fairly heavy ah mine does that you know what a lot of my equipment does that my rhythm wolf does not but yeah all right the pitch bin wheel feels really nice very snappy a lot of a resistance not too much resistance oh the keys feel very good too feel sturdy feel nice and square blocky ish they don't have a lot of curve going down on the edges, which I like that. It gets very hot in the south. You get sweaty and finger go blue. You don't want that. Alright, the switches. I'm not sure. It feels like I got a Tomcat right next to me. It feels like they're the same type of switches but the buttons feel different but pushing them feels the same that's interesting but as I've said with the uh, the Tomcat and the Rhythm Wolf the buttons feel really good although those are very snippy buttons nice snippy and here we have a nice big fat switch oh I like that oh, it was three position I forgot You might have to be a little careful with that. Like if you're wanting to go from poly to mono or unison to poly all of a sudden, you might want to be careful not to do it too much. You start doing some DJ moves and you're going to go straight from mono to unison and skip poly all together. All right, and then we have this rotational knob. Nice deep indents, but being nice and smooth to... Uh, twist and roll. The knobs feel nice and smooth. Not great, but pretty good. Seems like they're the same type of knobs that come with the uh, Rhythm Wolf and Tomcat. Enjoying the switch over here. 
metal casing. And uh, plastic side panels. They are not wood. They are definitely not wood. But there are a lot of companies online that will make wood ones for you. You might even have a good friend who can do it. All right, from here, I'm going to cut the camera, get everything kind of plugged up so we can turn it on for the first time and take a listen. All right, so be right back. I was about to plug everything in when I realized I forgot to show you the backside. So let me flip it around here. And in case you're wondering, this is what the uh, bottom looks like. The bottom is plastic. It is definitely plastic. And the back, you've got the power switch, DC in, USB, gate trigger in and out, MIDI in, out, through. Wow, MIDI in, out, and through. That's rare these days. Individual outputs for voice 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the main output, which is a mix. And a phone's out. There's a lot of connections on this guy. On this pack. It should be called a wolf pack. But I guess Tambor Wolf's a good uh, name too. So yeah, be right back. Let me connect it. Alright, I am back. And I am ready to get this thing turned on for the first time and see what it can do. Alright, going to turn it on. When I find the power switch. Oh, wrong side. Ah, nice. All right, so I am in mono mode. So from here, I should just be able to, yeah, that selects a different voice because you get a, four different voices, four different synths in mono mode. So uh, let's play it. Oh, and um, yeah, let's play it while slowly bringing up the volume. Back a little. I'm in stereo. There we go. Well, let's see, what do we have going here? Huh. Very, um, oh, overdrive that. Very shiny, huh? This definitely sounds different from the Rhythm Wolf. And I, I really, really know the Rhythm Wolf. I've spent a lot of time with it. And let's give the howl a try. Crank up the resonance and close the filter. Ooh, we got some special areas there. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit more. Well, not too much more. more resonance you put in, the quieter it gets, unfortunately, which was a problem with the Rhythm Wolf. Certain distortions will kind of negate that, but um, not the howl. It'll make it sound very interesting, though. Alright, um, you know what, let's leave that like that. Let's uh, just kind of twist some of these up a little bit. There we go. Alright. 
because apparently we have a sequence ready. So let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay, the pitch bend doesn't do anything with the sequence. Let's see what the fill does. So I think if I hit shift, it'll mute it. Seeing if uh, hitting a key would re trigger the uh, pitch, but now it just plays over the sequence. Like I said, the pitch bend doesn't work. But I'm guessing if you select this one and hit shift. Yep, so now you can do what you want. I'm not doing anything very good. Alright, um, let's try poly mode. Just from that, you get a kind of example of what you can do. Uh, what's going on is every time you hit a key, it cycles through the different voices. So if you want one sound, you kind of have to tweak them all in the same way. So let's see if we can kind of get that going. Okay. Put resonance of about 50. Let's see, pitch is way over there on that one. Let's see that to about seventy five. Okay. Hmm. Doesn't sound very good right now. Let's see how it sounds like this. Still overdriving a little bit. There we go. I think it's just too much bass for it. I don't think there's a way to change how much pitch changes with the pitch bend wheel. So yeah. 
Um, okay, and let's check out unison mode. Sounds very thick. Let's see if we can get it thicker. Try that with the howl. We're probably going to be using that a lot. So really, it's less of unison, more of like stack, which is pretty cool. Pretty cool. Right, I think it has to go by this sequence. Okay, let's see where we, here we are. Change patterns. Now we can go back into poly mode. And then we'll play the same sequence with a couple more notes. No, I was wrong. That's a mono sequence. This one's never playing though. Let's see, is it? Oh, it is muted. That's one of the things I wanted to do with this ever since I knew I was getting it was switch this around. All right. So, uh, I think we explored a lot with this thing. And I see a lot of potential. The uh, presets are not very good. The, um, I think they're going to need some effects to really bring out the, the shine that this thing can do. But we're going to have to experiment more. Uh, I do plan on doing very, very soon just a straight up, just Tambor Wolf video of jamming on it and playing the keys and such. So stay tuned, Hard Tech Studios. That'll be coming up real soon. And uh, till then, I'll see y'all later.